This is John Paul. I'm coming to you from Tokyo, Japan, and I'm covering this tweet by Leslie Hedlin. And the thing about her, no matter what you think about her, you know what? I don't think she's a Star Wars fan. Here's why. If a real Star Wars fan or a true Star Wars fan or whatever you want to call it, someone who really is invested and has loved Star Wars their whole life gets a gig making an official Star Wars production, well, if you want to call it that these days under Disney, but you get my drift, an official Star Wars product, you don't tweet out, beyond my wildest dreams. You probably tweet something a little bit more thoughtful than that. Something like, I've been waiting for this my whole life. I can't really actually believe this is happening. I'm not sure I even deserve this. Something like that. You want to go along the lines of showing how you're really astounded and how you're humbled by it, not just beyond my wildest dreams. Now, hey, maybe she'll tweet out something. Maybe I'll be wrong, but it's been a full day, and this is the only thing she's tweeted. And let's not forget, we don't trust her so much. This is actually... Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant, not anymore, as you guys know, because he's been convicted of some serious sex crimes. I won't get into the details, but she was his personal assistant for quite a while. So is this really the person you want to trust and give a Star Wars project to and have your name associated with? I guess these days, you know, what the hell? It's Star Wars. Anything goes. Let's just take the person who wrote Russian Dolls, person who worked for Harvey Weinstein, stuff like that. Throw in there. Let's keep going. So here's a tweet by Jeremy. If you guys don't know who he is, he's from Geeks and Gamers. Well, not from. It's pretty much, you know, his channel. And he says Harvey knows all about your dreams, which is because Harvey knows all about her dreams. Is because she's worked close with him for quite a while. And Star Wars Club here says, or excuse me, Club Star Wars says, congratulations with a picture of Harvey Weinstein, because Harvey Weinstein, we're going to assume, knows her pretty well. They were never on bad terms. So, Candace Marie says, Leslie calls Harvey her movie dad, so is Harvey a new movie dad to Star Wars. Congrats, how stunning and brave. So let's see, oh wait, Donna Schwartz, the woman who doesn't like white men, says, I'm so excited for you in caps. I'm so excited for you. You know, Star Wars, so excited, yay, it's a party. Get up some fucking popcorn lollipops and we'll just, you know, have some shits and giggles. Wow! Oh my god, Star Wars! Kind of how it feels to me. So, here's what uh, Candace clipped out. You know not to steal the Olive Garden's thunder, but when you're there, you're family. I don't think that I'm ever going to feel like I'm part of Harvey's world. Even though we didn't wind up doing this movie together, he'll always be my movie dad. So, you know what? She respects the guy. She never went on bad terms with the guy. And is there really nobody better you could find than this woman to give a Star Wars project to? Nobody? Really? Seems a little fishy to me. And I mean, that's just my main point here. Going back to what I said in the beginning is like, look, she tweets out this like little happy one-liner about how she got the cool Star Wars gig. And she doesn't really have anything thoughtful to say. She's not modest. She's not humble. She's ready to write the story, to kiss up the ass of Hollywood, like she's always been doing, like she admits she's been doing pretty much, where she said she asked for a black writer, not because she wanted one, because that's how she wanted to climb the ladder in Hollywood. Something to that extent. And now, here's what I'm thinking. If she really did want to give people a chance like diverse people a chance give up the position say you know what I worked all this way all this time defending diversity and I'm gonna give my job to somebody diverse not a white woman like I am like I called out but she won't do that you know why Because probably she doesn't give a shit about the diversity. She's just using the diversity for her own personal gain. And that's the thing with social justice warriors is they use diversity and they complain about white people for their own personal gain. And then when they get the position for the money, they take it. 
but if they cared so much, why not give away your position and then work close to the person? Say, hey, I'll let this person write and produce and, you know, I'll be there and I'll take this other job, you know, but not the main job because we need diverse people in that job. But they don't do that. She don't do that. She just kisses ass up the ladder and I was going to say ruin Star Wars. It's already pretty much ruined, you know. But, you know, it's going to be female-centric, so we'll see how that works out. Maybe that's why people are skeptical about her in the first place, because she's already selling the thing on gender. Anyway, doing shout-outs, special thanks, things like that. If you're not subscribed here, consider subscribing. I'm doing Amber Heard vs. Johnny Depp, even some Star Wars now, because look what's going on in the Star Wars world. Doing some pop culture, whatever I feel like, Japan vlogs, if you don't subscribe... Yeah, I'll be pretty sad, but I'll get over it. If you do subscribe, then I guess maybe I'll see you next time. Hit notifications. We're done. If you are not subscribed to this channel, The Entertainment Hacker, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button now.